Hello everyone, how you doing? Welcome to Game Tech UK. Welcome to a little cheeky stream this afternoon, checking out the PlayStation uh, 4 reveal. I've got that waiting here for you um, on there. So soon as that's live, it's got 17 minutes. We're just going to have a chat. I've also in the background um got some got some death stranding as well chilling out just chilling out i've got a can of coke we've got you here we're all in here how you doing anyway feel free to uh playstation 4 reveal no it's playstation 5 <laughs> how you doing anyway how you doing what are you doing most importantly uh, who, who's off work at the moment who's off work <laughs> Yeah, finally, Death Stranding. Yeah, so I'm going to play some... Uh, we're going to have a chat and just play some Death Stranding while we're waiting. So it says here we've got 17 minutes, and I imagine there'll be a bit of a countdown um, on the PlayStation 5 reveal as well. So just a um, nice little chill out. We'll have a nice little chat. What do we know so far about the PlayStation... About the Xbox One X, sorry, or the X series? 12, 12 teraflops, we've got 16 gig of DDR6 um, graphics RAM. This is quite interesting. People are talking about, oh, surprise, thank you very much, mate. People are talking about, you know, oh, you, you're going to need a new TV. You're not. Their target, their target specification for graphics is 4K60, but it will do 4K60, uh, 4K120 as well. 8 cores, 3.8 gigahertz. Right, one thing I have uh, just learned, uh, I'm sure if you watched the video as well, which I'm really not happy about, is this proprietary memory. Proprietary memory. So you can plug in your standard um, backup drive and you can store your games on there. But if you want the X series games, it has to be transferred to these little memory sticks that are at the moment one terabyte each. And the reason for that is, is that they say you can use the SSD for virtual RAM, which you can do now. You know, even, you can plug in a memory stick and use that as virtual RAM. And they're saying that the USB drives that you plug in, they're just not sufficient for that. I'm not very happy about that. I thought, I thought the days of... Um, I thought the days of proprietary memory and stuff like that were well over. Yeah, so I'm a bit disappointed with that. Um, but yeah, what do you think? What do you think about this? Do you do you think that the PlayStation 5 is going to have its own memory uh, module, which I'm really not happy about? I love the way you can just go to Amazon and get like a, a, a 4 gig and just plug it straight in. I love that. Apparently, you can still play... The Xbox version plays all backwards compatible of all Xbox generations. So you can play like Xbox One games, Xbox 360 games, Xbox One games through your own hard drive, right? You can still do that. But if you want to play the X series games, you're going to need to transfer that game to these little memory sticks. Um, I'm just not happy about that. Just not happy about that. So we're going to see, we're going to see what these come up with. Hopefully, yeah, it seems like a step back on memory cards. I can understand they want they want programmers to be able to know what hard drive, know what speed, and be able to use that as virtual RAM. But surely it's got enough RAM in it anyway. A bit disappointed with that. Yeah, I wonder if they'll show the console itself. Yeah, bring back Project Gotham. Yeah, <laughs> that you will get. Um... Oh, thank you very much, mate. You don't have to do that. I appreciate that. Don't know what you mean, Jay. What, what, uh, what about what, Stephen? I'll explain about what. Thank you for coming in as well. I do appreciate it. Two hundred of you here. I do appreciate it. It feels yeah, exactly yeah. So yeah, we've got um, we've got a bit of Death Stranding. We've got that. Yeah, we've got that. Oh, definitely a way to make money for them. Oh my God, yeah, it's going to make a lot of money. A lot of money. Hello, Sandy. How are you? Let's say some names anyway. Let's say some names. Why you're all here? We've got Craig, Russ, Stu's here. Art. We've got Steve, Snowy. Who I know loves a bit of Death Stranding. Seth's here. Daryl. We got Stephen Hedges, Fred Bear. We got Sandy. Ginger Jude is here. Ginger Jude. Ginger Dude is here. <laughs> Lewis Milestone. Oh God, it's going to stop going fast now. Jaffa. We got Kingy. I can do this. I can do this. Uh, Daryl's here. Milestone. Night Gamer. Big Johnny. Stimson, of course. Got to improve their controllers. Funnily enough. The Xbox now have said they've shown their new controller, which hasn't got haptic feedbacks or anything like that. hasn't got a screen on there. Um, so it's not on the face of it as advanced as the PlayStation 5 controller is supposed to be. But you can actually use the Xbox One controller 
on the on the new X series as well, and and vice versa. They're, I think they're trying to make their little ecosystem as friendly to what you've already brought. Now that is a good sign for things like steering wheels, handbrakes. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that will just all go across. Doesn't matter. So I'm really hoping that's going to happen. Hello, warrior. How are you? The cards, I have one one terabyte external. Do you mean I can't use that? Yes, Steve. Yeah, so if you're on an Xbox, now this hasn't, be, hasn't been confirmed for PlayStation, but if you're on an Xbox, right, and you want to get the latest version and you've got a, a four terabyte or a one terabyte external drive, you can use that and you can store your Xbox games on there. Xbox One. Xbox 360, the original Xbox, you can do all of that. Uh, thanks for keeping us entertained. Uh, oh, even though you have your own challenges at the moment. Thank you very much, mate. Your name didn't come up there, so let me just see who that was. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I know Stimson. Yeah, let me just see what this is, and I'll carry on explaining, Steve. We don't want anyone's name to be missed. That were, Oh, Dazza. Oh, thank you very much, Dazza. I appreciate that. And, uh, and Sir as well. Um, I appreciate that. I got you. Right, so you can store any older generations on your hard drive, right, and plug it in and play them. But if you want to get the latest Xbox X series games, you've got this little plug-in hard drive. At the moment, they're coming in one terabyte. It's like a memory stick, basically. They're proprietary. You can only get them at the moment, you know, proper Xbox branded ones. That's what you must store your Xbox X series games on for them to use for the developer to utilize that hardware and for it really to become part of the machine and you can use that for virtual RAM as well but if you want to buy the very latest Xbox X release it can't run off your hard drive that you plug in you can store the game on there but when you want to play it you're gonna to have to do some swapping around until you buy more memory cards of course so yeah, that's that's the thing. And they're not going to be cheap, are they? And you're probably going to get one included. But that's one terabyte. You, we're going to need more than that, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, PlayStation 4 didn't have external support, but that was only a software issue. Yeah, that was that was just software. I've just tried to run my screen as I as I thought it was dirty. Turns out it's something on your game. Oh, on the left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just on there. <laughs> yeah, it's totally fine. <laughs> Hello Suzuki, how are you? Any word on backwards compatibility? I'm only bothered about backwards compatibility for PlayStation 4. I don't care about PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2. It just doesn't it doesn't um doesn't worry me. I'm not really that um worried on that. So that I'm not worried about. If they don't do it, they don't do it. Right, I'm just having a look here. Let's turn, let's move that. Where's my window capture gone? Why is that not working? Oh, there it is. It's there. Right, so we're just waiting now anyway. But um, yeah, nine minutes. Nine minutes. So I haven't played much Death Stranding, have I? <laughs> it's fine. Just something on in the background. I've completed it, Snowy. I just need to chip away at all the other bits, yeah. I will have to do a stream where we play it properly. You reckon we'll see Euro Truck on these new consoles? Possibly. I mean, I don't think to start with because there's not going to be a huge installed player base, is there? So the, the, the incentive isn't going to be there for them straight away. Probably 18 months down the line, once everyone's got it and moved over and they've tested it to see whether the power is um, enough, then yeah, I think so. But not to start with. Absolutely not. Are you going to do a link for Help for Heroes soon? Yeah, of course. I've already done that video with a link in it anyway, but I'll be doing more on that on Friday. Yeah, rest in peace, my wallet. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully we can see what it looks like today. I don't... I'm not sure if we're going to see that, you know. This is meant to be... Was it Paul Carey, his name is? Um, and I think this is a deep dive into the specs. I don't know if we're going to see what it looks like. Xbox have been really open now. We know what it looks like. We know what the spec is. Do your worst PlayStation. That's that's really what it is, isn't it? Yeah, I'm all about the aesthetics. Yeah. Um, a yes or no in chat. You know I like doing this. Yes or no. Not yet. <laughs> do you like the Xbox One or the Xbox X series? Do you like it? Yes or no in the chat. It's a vote, right? So we're going to get an idea. Do we like that sort of tall, minimalistic fridge look? Spam in the chat. Yes or no. Yes, it is a vote, Seth. Yeah. Um, we got quite... Oh, there's quite a few no's. 
Oh, no, there are some yeses. Okay. I don't mind it, but it's not the best design, is it? It's not the best design. Yeah. It's going to look like a freezer. And the only thing is, I mean, most TV cabinets, and this is where it's designed to go, isn't it? Most TV cabinets have just about that much in. I don't think it's going to fit. I don't think it's going to fit. Maybe it goes on its side, but it sort of doesn't make much sense on its side, does it? Falls at seven. Well, it'd be falls at eight by then, wouldn't it, Kingy? Hope you get on the blog page. Uh, yeah, well, I've got it here. Yeah, I've got it here. It's fine. Yeah, I'm sure you can lay it down, but it, it sort of makes less sense laying down, doesn't it? Sorry, there wasn't much, much Death Stranding. Let's just sit here and chat, because otherwise I'm distracted with the game. And uh, let's just sit here and chat. It's all good. Yeah, the original Xbox wasn't the prettiest, was it? I did like the um, uh, the little um, see-through one. I quite like that. That was cool. Whoa. Whoa. Where, where have we gone? That's it. <laughs> and there. Hang on. Hang on. We're coming back. We are coming back. That's better. Hope online isn't paid. Fredbear, of course it's going to be paid. Of course it's going to be paid. How can it not be paid? Absolutely 100%. Um, it will be a paid-for service, just as it is now. Just a white screen. Now that's fine. Uh, who's got the same question? And I'll answer it. Yeah, a lot of people didn't know that with the PlayStation 2, and I'm sure you knew this, but you could twist the little uh, PlayStation logo around depending if you add it down or um, up. I think that was good. Are they telling us everything today? Probably not, Drew. Yeah, probably not. Now, on Xbox X series, they're talking about even if the game hasn't got HDR, the Xbox X series is going to create it, obviously, uh, you know, um, uh, mimic it and basically improve older games. I really hope that is the, the, the I hope that's the, the way that the PlayStation is going to go as well. I really do. Yeah, my dog's lovely. She's not in here at the moment, but she's outside. <clears throat> playing the long mark absolutely put in yeah and i don't think today they're gonna start talking about delays and stuff like that i think today is going to be very much about look this is the ram this is the, the secret ingredient this is this is the hard drive i really want to know about that proprietary hard drive absolutely because that is that's a massive put off for me on the Xbox. Absolutely massive. Really disappointed that they've gone down that route. I, I just don't understand it. Uh, favorite console, PlayStation 1. Come on. And what is your guess for the cost? Well, I've always said, uh, thank you, Daryl. I've always said, right, especially if there's going to be two versions and the amount of spec they're putting in, I think it's going to be between six and eight hundred pound for a package where you go into game or Amazon. It comes with a game, um, especially if we've now got this proprietary hard drive. I think between six and eight hundred. I genuinely do. What's the situation with the Xbox hard drive you don't like? Helicopter waffle. Uh, you can plug in your normal hard drive like you do now, but you won't be able to play the latest generation games off your hard drive. You can play Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, all off of your hard drive. So say, for example, you've got a four terabyte USB. You can plug that in. Away you go. If you want to play Xbox X series games, which of course you do. That's why you're buying it. The only way you can do that is to transfer it to an Xbox proprietary Microsoft hard drive and plug that in. So they come in one terabytes to start with. If you want more, you got to buy them. You can swap your games around, so you can still plug your hard drive in, move your game off, put that game on, and of course it'd be fairly fast, but that is the only way, yeah. Thank you, Seth. So, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Fuck it, no, I'm not. I'm really not happy about that. No, absolutely not. I don't like that at all. Yeah, what a teraflop. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's like the old days, isn't it? Making you buy proprietary stuff. I just don't like it at all. Didn't the PlayStation, was it the Vita or the PSP, where it was a normal memory stick, uh, memory uh, card, but of course you had to buy the Sony one. Yeah, not good. Uh, 
Is the PlayStation 5 backwards compatibility? Ho- hoping we'll find that out today. I'm guessing it will be. I'm guessing it will be. Certainly with PlayStation 4. It's got to be. It's got to be. I do like the way the Xbox has now um, put all of its generation under one console. You can chuck all your other ones out. Keep your software. This box does it all. I do like that. Um, hello, Maxi. My boy's in here. How are you, Max? But yeah, I'm not um, I'm not fussed about backwards compatibility. My days of playing PlayStation 1, 2 and 3 games are over. Let's face it. It's going to be PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, you know? Yeah, I love the PSP. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Got my bucket with me in case I threw up on the new PlayStation. <laughs> my son Max is 11. He's an Xbox fan. He's a big fan. And <laughs> look at him. He's got his bucket with him. Brilliant. How are you, Max? Hello, Kimmy. How are you? That was funny. That was good. Hello, Emir. How are you? Right, we've got two minutes. Yeah, we've got two minutes. I'm guessing there will be um, a little intro, quite a long intro while we're waiting for whatever to happen will happen. But uh, I don't think it will start in two minutes. I think the stream will start in two minutes, but then we'll have, um, yeah, a troll in the room. Yeah. Good idea. I think if the bundle... Uh, okay, yeah. Hello, Shift Dude. How are you? Hello, Sir Lunatic. How are you? You're on the Jubilee light. Be careful, Amir. Yeah, stay clean, mate. Stay clean. Yeah, I think so, Pudding. Yeah, I think that the fact that they've got it all under one umbrella is a good selling point. But in reality, especially when you see these Xbox X and the PlayStation 5 games, in reality, you know, apart from things that you love at the moment, say, for example the final fantasy remake you're going to keep playing that you're going to keep playing gran turismo until the new one comes out but in terms of playing the older games yeah it's a selling point but it's not important to me absolutely not the thing is there's loads of um there's loads of ways to play retro games now and i don't do any of them so i can't be that bothered about it hello ian how are you yeah one minute left one minute left yeah, it, the target um, resolution and frame rate is 4K 60 and 4K 120 if you've got a PC monitor to plug it into. Um, you won't need... A lot of people, oh yeah, you need a new TV. You don't. You don't. If you want that 120, you're going to have to have HDMI 2.1, I think it is. But 4K 60 is the target resolution and frame rate. So, uh, Which I think it should be anyway. We're, st- we're not ready to get up to 8K. Yeah. Refresh. Let's have a look. Refresh. What, me? No, beginning shortly. It's fine. We're waiting for them. 8K 30, yeah, but there's no 8K TVs out, is there? There's none. Please don't talk over when the stream starts. All right, boss. Well, you might be better off going to the actual PlayStation if you would want no talking. The idea is here is that we're chatting together. So if you want no talking, you're probably better off doing it on the PlayStation channel. What's happened? What's happened? <laughs> What's happened? Oh shit! Where's it gone? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Hey, here we go. Oh, so it's not a live stream. It's a video. Yeah, it's not a live stream. It is a video. Early whiskey? No, no, I haven't. Yeah, so this is a video. This is not a live stream. Can I ever keep quiet, Dave? <clears throat> you don't know why you have a bad feeling about this. I might do it, yeah. Right, how does that sound in terms of volumes with the music and me playing? Because I don't want to be too loud, I don't want to be too quiet. I won't be just talking over it for no reason. We can talk together and talk in the chat, you know? How do you know it's a video? Because this little intro is for a premiered video. It, it's not for a stream. Yeah, new move controllers. Oh, God, yeah. I don't think we're going to learn that today. I think we're going to learn purely about the spec. What the hard drive situation is. How many cores it's got. How many teraflops. What GDDR uh, graphics memory. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be in response and almost in retaliation to Xbox's tech video. I don't think they're going to go through everything yet. Absolutely not. Hello, Wang Tintin. How you doing? 
Hein? Não, 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 como? Não. Your live stream pausing? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Just refresh it. Just refresh it. Right, here we go. Here we go. And like I say, I won't talk unnecessarily. Let's just watch it together. Hi. Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel the, the talk that we had uh, planned for GDC. Um, but we do have some super exciting news about ps super exciting here we go and who better to bring that to you than the one and only mark cerny without further ado over to you mark thank you jim that's very quiet there will be lots of chances later on this year oh god that is quiet games. yeah yeah I'm, I'm trying to turn it up it's, it's up it's up as loud as it'll go and how they influenced development yeah that's it uh, i can't turn it up anymore no, i'm a big believer in console generations once every five or six or seven years a console arrives with substantially new capabilities i can't turn them up that's as a loud as it's going to go game developers hopefully not too overwhelming and soon there's games that could never have been created before now it used to be that as a console designer you'd somehow intuit what yeah that, that's as loud as i can get him to go it's very quiet very quiet it in complete secrecy for the PlayStation consoles, that period lasted through PlayStation 3, a powerful and groundbreaking console. But okay, I'll do that. One that caused quite a lot of oh, hang on, hang on. Difficult to develop games for. About that. So, starting with PlayStation 4, we've taken a different approach, roughly centered around three principles. As that. The first of these is listening to the developers, which is Better? to say that a cool. lot of what we put into a console derives directly from the needs and aspirations of the game creators. We definitely do have some ideas of our own, but at the core of cool. our philosophy for designing consoles is that game players are here for the fantastic games, which is to say that game creators matter. Anything we can do to make life easier for the game Let's creators just chill out and watch it together. help them realize their dreams, we will do. So, so about once every two years, I take a tour of the industry. I go to the various developers and publishers, sit down, and discuss how they're doing with the current consoles and what they'd like to see in future consoles. This requires groups yeah, definitely on the road, as reaching the bulk of the game creators involves talking to well over a hundred mm. people. It's something like two dozen. Look like cardboard cutouts, yeah. Developers. And it is incredibly valuable. By the way, the feature most requested by the developers that was an SSD which we were very happy to put in hardware, but a lot of problem solving was required. I'll be doing a deep dive on the SSD and surrounding systems later He's on. He's going to deep dive us later on. Awesome. It's also key to make a generational leap while keeping the console sufficiently familiar to game developers. I think about this in terms of balancing evolution and revolution. Now, with PlayStation 1, it's very common, isn't it? Target was a revolution each time with a brand new feature set. That was great in many ways, but time for the developers to get up and running got longer with each console. In the past, I've called this time to triumph. <laughs> Here's what I had for those three consoles. To be clear, I'm not talking about time to make a game. Developers will be ambitious, and it may take them. No, no, this is good. This is technical. I like this. I vision. like this. What I'm talking about is that dead time before graphics and other aspects of game development are up and running, and trying to minimize that. He's good. He's good. On the other hand, if we're trying to reduce that dead time to zero, that means the hardware architecture can't change at all. We're handcuffed. We need to judge. Oh God, he wants to handcuff and deep dive what me. What value it adds, and whether it's worth the increase in developer time needed to support it. So with PlayStation 4, we were able to strike a pretty good balance between performance and familiarity. We got required learning back to PlayStation 1 levels. With PS5, the GPU was definitely the area we felt the most tension. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to see that. Adding new features. There's no picture yet, is there? Familiar programming model. Definitely, Kenny. Ultimately, I think we've ended up with something. There's under no a picture month there, is there? Up to speed. That feels like we're striking about the right balance. I'll go into a bit more detail later today about our philosophy with the GPU and the specific feature set that resulted from it. It's also very important for us as the hardware team, to find new dreams, by which I mean something other than CPU performance, GPU performance, and the amount The fake of audience is a joke, the isn't it? In graphics performance you don't need it. You don't need that. It's terrible. But Actually, no, he is moving. He is moving, but you don't need it. Significant value to the game creators and through them. 
the players. That's why the SSD was very much on our list of directions to explore, <laughs> Definitely snowing. regardless of what came out of the conversations with game developers. Now you're right, boss, it's not fake, yeah. The biggest feature in this category is the custom engine for audio. That's today's final topic. Yeah, I'm the really excited about the audio. vastly improved audio. Mm. In particular, 3D audio isn't something that came out of the developer meetings. It's much more the case that we had a dream of what might be possible five years from now, and then worked out a number of steps we could take to set us on that path. So here again are the three principles, the first being enabling the desires of developers to drive the hardware design. To me, the He's SSD so calm, really is the key to the next generation. It's a, a game changer. And it was the number one ask from developers for PlayStation 5. As in, we know it's probably impossible, but can you put an SSD in it? Why, is it, why would it be impossible? Come on. Internally. It was clear that the presence of a hard drive in every PlayStation 4 was having a positive impact. A lot of things that would simply have been impossible at Blu-ray disc speeds were now possible. At the same time, though, in 2015 and so 2016, true, John. when we were having these conversations, developers were already banging up against the limits of the hard drive. That'd be nice, and pimps. a lot of developer time was being spent designing around slow load speeds. I want to focus in on just one number here, which is how long it takes to load a gigabyte of data from a hard drive. Here we the go. The difficulty being that hard drives are neither particularly fast nor flexible. If all your yeah, data but we, is in we don't need this. We know it should be an SSD. Likely, it's got to be an SSD, isn't it? 50 to 100 megabytes a second, depending on where the data is located on the hard drive. Let's assume it's on the outer edge, which means loading a gigabyte. It's like they're treating us to an SSD. If you compress it has to be packages, SSD. You can fit more data on the Blu-ray disc and also effectively boost your hard drive read speed by the compression ratio. We support Zlib decompression on PlayStation 4 that gets you something like 50% more data on the disk and 50% higher effective read speed. Unfortunately, though, it's highly likely that your data yeah, is scattered so, around yeah. in various files on the hard drive. <laughs> Julian Clary. is sourced from multiple locations within those files. Definitely, so lots it can't of be, can it? are needed at 2 to 50 ish milliseconds each. My rule of thumb is that the hard drive is spending two thirds of its time seeking, and only a third of its time. We don't need to know this bit. Data. PlayStation 4 hard drive. Putting all of that together, a gigabyte is very roughly 20 seconds to load from a hard drive. Now, a gigabyte is not much data. Games are using five or six gigabytes of RAM on PlayStation 4, so boot times and load times can get pretty. He's such a good presenter, when you though, and they. Differently, as a player, you wait for the game to boot wait for the game to load, wait for the level to reload every time you die, and you wait for what is euphemistically called fast travel. And all of that leads to the dream. What if we could have not just an SSD, but a blindingly fast SSD? Instantaneous. We load okay, now we're getting there. A second from it, what would change? Now, SSDs are completely different from hard drives. They don't have CPU. Yeah, definitely, flash. Pete. Yeah, yeah. If you have a 5 gigabyte a second SSD, you can read data from a thousand different locations in that second, pretty much at speed. As for time to load a gigabyte, this is no <laughs> Is someone data, working in from behind? Memory is bigger. Instead, Maybe. we should be asking how long to load two gigabytes. That would be and nice. The answer is about a quarter of a second. Mm. That's amazing. We're talking two orders of magnitude, meaning very roughly 100 times faster. Which means at five Which it should be really, second, shouldn't it? It's next generation. The potential is that the game boots in a second. There are no load screens. The game just fades down while loading a half dozen gigabytes and fades back up again. Same for a reload. You're immediately back in the action after you die. And fast travel becomes so fast, it's blink and you miss it. Mm. As game creators, we go from trying to distract the player from how long fast travel yeah, is taking, yeah, like yeah. those Spider-Man subway rides, mm. to being so blindingly fast that You're we just might there. even have to slow that transition down. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool, right? But for me, this <laughs> Very is cool. not the yes. primary reason to change from a hard drive to an that SSD. That is cool. The primary reason for an ultra-fast SSD is that it gives the game designer freedom. Or to put that differently, with a hard drive, the 20 seconds that it takes to load a gigabyte can sabotage the game that the developer is trying to create. I think almost all of us in the room have experienced this, maybe in different ways. Say we're making an adventure game and we have two rich environments where we each want enough textures and models to fill memory. 
which you can do as long as you have a long yeah, staircase I, or elevator It's important ride, information. Or so corridor where you can ditch the old assets and then take 30 seconds or so to load the new assets. Having a 30-second elevator ride is a, a little extreme. More realistically, we'd probably chop the world into a number of smaller pieces. What, is that the PlayStation? calculations <laughs> with sight lines and that you stand in behind. Like we did for Haven City when we were making Jack 2. The game is 20 years old, but not much has changed since then. All those twisty passages are there for a reason. There's a whole subset of level design dedicated to this sort of work, but still, it's a giant distraction for a team that just wants to make their game. I love all this, though. So, See, when I talked about the I love it all. Essence, I could listen to this for ages. For that five gigabyte a second target was to... Yeah, and it is a loads, deep dive, yes. But also part of the reason for that target was streaming. And the as audience isn't the cutout. What if it's the just SSD social is so fast that as the player is turning around, it's, it's already loading load it up. for everything behind the player in that split second. Mm. If you figure that it takes half a second to turn, that's four gigabytes of compressed data you can load. That sounds about right for next gen. Anyway, back to the whole <laughs> Anyway, another strategy <laughs> anyway, I'm boring you. <laughs> effective read speed is to make big sequential chunks of data. For example, we might group all the data together for each city block. That removes most of the seeks, and the streaming gets faster. But there's a downside too, which is that frequently used data is included yeah, in very many technical. chunks and therefore is on the hard drive many, many times. Marvel Spider-Man uses this strategy, and though it works very well for increasing the streaming speed, well, I don't know, boss. Massive it is badged as a, as a deep dive the into the hardware, like which he's doing, isn't it? Are on the hard drive 400 times. <laughs> We're going to be questions at the end. Are things that cramp a creative director's style. Either level design gets a little bit boring in places, or the data is duplicated so many times that it no longer fits on the Blu-ray disc. And you end up with hard limits on the player's run speed or driving speed. The player can't go faster. Yeah, I think it's interesting, Javain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, I'm sure many of you have noticed that after a patch download, the PlayStation 4 will sometimes take a long time to install the patch. Sometimes, oh my god. That's because when just part of a file has been changed, the new data can be downloaded pretty quickly. But before the game boots up, a brand new file has to be constructed that includes the changed portion. Yeah, Otherwise, all the time, yeah. Otherwise, change yeah. would add a seek or two. Even so, you can occasionally see this happening on game titles. They start to hitch once they get patched enough. With an SSD, though, no seeks. So no need to make brand new files with the changes. Oh, we know about high, uh, SSD, though, don't we? No Come on. installs as you know them today. There's yet one more benefit, which is that system memory can be used much more. Right, this is where Xbox are using 4, proprietary hard, hard drives so you can use it as RAM. Let's see whether they're going to do it. You I hope not. you need a piece of data, it's much too late to go out and load it. So system memory has to contain all of the data that could be used in the next 30 seconds or so of gameplay. That means a lot of the 8 gigabytes of system memory is idle. It's just waiting there. So they can use it as extra RAM. Used. On PlayStation 5, though, the SSD is very close to being like more RAM. Right, that's Typically, it's fast GDDR6. That's exactly the same as the Xbox X. You can just load it from the SSD and use it. There's no need to have lots of data parked in system memory waiting to potentially be used. Yeah, 16 gig. A different gig, way yeah. of saying that is that most of RAM is working on the game's behalf. But you have to this have a special hard drive for the Xbox X version. DDR6 feels right for PlayStation 5. The presence of the SSD reduces the need for a massive intergenerational increase in size. So, back to the dream of the SSD. Here's the set of targets. Oh god, we're still on the SSD. Fast. No load screens. Definitely. Design job. freedom, meaning no twisty passages or long corridors. More game on the disc and more game on the SSD. And finally, those patch installs go away. The reality, though, is that the SSD is just one piece of the puzzle. There's a it's lot not of just a dream, no, is it? No. can occur in between the SSD and the game code that uses the data. Hello, Cody's. You can see this on PlayStation 4. If I use an SSD with 10 times the speed of a standard hard drive, I probably see only double the loading speed, if that. For PlayStation 5, yeah. our goal was not so true, just Snowy. that we the see it, didn't we? itself be 100 times faster. It was that game loads and streaming. I think they're going on too much about SSDs. So every it's a given for anyone, isn't it? Every needed to be addressed. And there are a lot of them. Let's look at check-in and what happens when its overhead gets 100 oh, times larger. 
<laughs> Conceptually, check-in is a pretty simple process. Data is loaded into system memory from the hard drive or SSD. It's examined. A few values are tweaked to check it in, and then it's moved to its final location. Wow. <laughs> This is SSD a real deep about. dive. That real last deep part, dive. Moving the data, meaning copying it from one location to another, takes roughly an entire next gen CPU core. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If all the overheads get 100 times larger, that will cripple the frame rate as soon as the player moves, and that massive. Yeah, I think so, Madman. I don't think we're going to see much. The SSD. So to solve all of that, we built a lot of custom hardware, namely a custom flash controller. Here we go. This, this, is, units this is better. Range. We've moved on now, I think. The flash controller in the SSD was designed for smooth and bottleneck-free operation, but also... <laughs> Try and get the virus, Dave. There are six levels of priority when reading from the SSD. It's not a history priority lesson, it's a future lesson. Important. You can imagine the player heading into some new location in the world and the game requesting a, a few gigabytes of textures. And while those textures are being loaded, he hasn't tripped up on one word, has he? Not one word has he words. stumbled or Having tripped multiple over. Priority He's levels, good. Like the audio for those dying words. <laughs> Press Z to skip media. tutorial. On one side, that flash controller connects to the actual flash dies that supply. <laughs> if I hear SSD one more time. Bandwidth target of five gigabytes a second, we ended up with a 12 channel interface. He's going to start, um, <laughs> he's going to start glitching in a minute. The bandwidth we've achieved is actually five and a half gigabytes a second. With a 12 channel interface, the most natural size that emerges for an SSD is 825 gigabytes. <laughs> Can someone give me bullet points? The question point? for us was, is that enough? I mean, it's tempting to add more, but Flash certainly doesn't come cheap, and we have a responsibility to our gaming audience to be cost-effective with regards to what we put in the console. Ultimately, we resolved this question by looking at the play patterns of a broad range of gamers. We examined the specific games that they were playing over the course of a weekend or a week or a month, <laughs> and days. whether that set of games would fit properly on the <laughs> Any longer on the PlayStation 6 of it. You're cracking me up, you lot. caused by reinstalls or redownloads would be quite It's fine. Long. Just, just go so with the flow, right? Just go with it. Gigabyte size, while also preparing he said SSD so too much, isn't he? Those who want more storage can add it. I'll go through the details in a moment. Is that God's Back wallpaper behind controller. him? Right, and here we go. Let's move on from... ...next to our main custom chip via four lanes okay. of Gen 4 PCIe. And inside the main custom chip is a pretty hefty unit dedicated to I.O. Before we talk I think about what they are does, going down the route of Xbox that we have to buy specific Sony hard drives. Format. We decided to use it again on PlayStation 5, but on my 2017 tour of developers, I learned about a new format called Kraken from Rad Game Tools. It's like Zlib's smarter cousin. Simple, uh, similar types of algorithms, but about 10% better compression. Yeah, definitely. Which is pretty big. That means 10% more be game really on really disappointed if I do that. Ray disc or on the SSD. Kraken had only been out for a year, but it was already becoming a de facto industry standard. Half of the teams I talked to were either using it or getting ready to evaluate it. <laughs> so we hustled and built a custom a... decompressor into the I.O. unit one capable of handling over five gigabytes of Kraken format input data a second. After decompression, <laughs> that's smart, it happy and more productive. Gigabytes, but the unit itself is capable of outputting as much as 22 gigabytes a second if the data happened to compress particularly well. Can you imagine a life in By the, the way, audience? In terms of performance, that custom decompressor equates to nine of our Zen 2 cores. That's what it would take <laughs> to decompress the Kraken stream. <laughs> I haven't moved an inch yet. Yeah. I saw one of them look round. More in the custom I.O. unit. I want them to get onto the graphics, that's what I DNA want. SSD, move on. Exactly where it wants to send the data coming off of the SSD. This equates to another Zen 2 core or two in terms of its copy performance. Its primary purpose yeah, see is like to remove check-in as a bottleneck. There's two dedicated I.O. coprocessors and a large RAM pool. These aren't Zen 2 cores, they are there principally to direct the variety of custom hardware around them. One of the but I love this stuff. I know I'm SSD taking a mickey, but I love this stuff. This lets us bypass traditional file I.O. and its bottlenecks when reading from the SSD. I think there's too much the detail into the hard drive, though. memory mapping, which I know doesn't sound like anything related to the SSD, but a lot of developers map and remap memory as mm. part of file Yeah, bullet, I.O., you're probably right, mate, yeah. can become a bottleneck. There are coherency engines to assist the coprocessors. Mm. Coherency comes up a lot in places. Probably the biggest coherency issue... Yeah, you're right, John. It's a great video, but it shouldn't have been their first one, should it? Flushing We've been waiting for this since February, haven't we? ...is 
an unattractive yeah. option. It could really hurt the GPU performance. So we've implemented a gentler way of doing things where <laughs> the coherency engines inform the GPU of the overwritten address ranges. And he must know that most people want to see GPU the console to and some graphics. Of just those address ranges. The best thing is, as a game developer, when you read from the SSD, you don't need to know any of this. You don't even oh, need to know don't. that your data is compressed. We don't need to know any of this. Just indicate what data you'd like to read from your original uncompressed file and where you'd like to put it. Yeah, you're and right, the boss. the whole process of loading it happens invisibly to you and at very high speed. Back to the dream. Thanks to Back all to the dream. Money, Bloody hell. What was the nightmare? Five gigabytes a second really should translate into something like a hundred times faster I.O. than PS4 and allow the dream of <laughs> no load screens and super fast streaming to become a reality. Having said that, expandability of our SSD is going to be quite important. Flash is costly and you may very well want to add storage. To <laughs> you don't need to know this. Fucking hell. Now, the kind of storage you need depends on how you're going to use it. If you have an extensive PlayStation 4 library and you'd like to take advantage of backwards compatibility oh, with right. on PlayStation 5, okay. a large external hard drive is ideal. Same as you Xbox. Okay, he's almost confirmed that for me. Directly from there, thus saving the pricier PlayStation 4 games can PlayStation stay on your plug-in. Or you can PlayStation 5 games will be on a proprietary hard drive. You have to buy if it individually. If you're in adding more storage to play Same. PlayStation 5, ideally you would add to your SSD storage. We will be supporting certain M2 SSDs. These are internal drives that you can get on the open market and install in a bay in the PlayStation 5. As for which ones we support and when, I'll get to that in a moment. Okay, they that's not too the bad then, is it? Lid, okay. Like our SSD does. So they can take full advantage of the decompression, I.O. coprocessors, and all the other features I was That's talking. one tiny step forward. I Here's don't mind catch, that. Though. I don't mind that. That commercial drive has to be at least as fast as ours. Games that rely on the speed of our SSD need to that's work better. flawlessly with any That is drive. better. When I gave the Wired interview last year, I said that the PlayStation 5 mm. SSD was faster than anything available on PC. <laughs> yes, no, yes. Yeah. Special M2 drives used PCIe 3.0, and four lanes of that cap out at 3.5 gigabytes a second. No, he's in not talking words, about cloud storage. No he's talking PCIe about hard drives you plug in, drive can but you don't have to buy it from them. Spec. You can get any M2 drives with hard PCIe drive. 4.0 are now out in the market. We're getting that reaches this minimum spec. And seeing... Mm, four or five gigabytes a second from them. By year's end, I expect there will be drives that saturate 4.0 and support seven gigabytes a second. Having said that, we are comparing apples and oranges though, because <laughs> that commercial M2 drive will have its own architecture, its own flash controller. Apples? Or this example, is not an Apple device, is it? The specification <laughs> lays out a priority scheme for requests that the M2 drives can use. And that scheme is pretty nice, but it only has two true <laughs> priority levels. Our drive supports six. We can right. hook up a drive. So you are going to buy their hard drives, basically. But our custom okay. I.O. unit has to arbitrate the extra priorities rather than the M2 drive's flash controller. And so the M2 drive needs a little extra speed to take care of issues arising from the different approach. That commercial drive also needs to... Stay with it. Let's see where they're going to go with it. Just stay with it. PlayStation 5 for M2 drives. Unlike internal hard drives, there's unfortunately no standard for the height of an M2 drive. Well, all and of this is just to tell you that you've got to buy in fact, hard drive um, slots. That's it. That's right what this is. You've got M2 to buy extra hard drive space to play ways. your games on. When games hit beta as they get ready for the PlayStation 5 launch at year end, we'll also be doing some compatibility testing to make sure that the architecture of we have done it already. M2 drives isn't too foreign for the games to handle. Once we've done that compatibility testing, we should be able to start letting you know which drives will physically fit and which drive samples have benchmarked appropriately high in our testing. It would be great if that happened by launch, but it's likely to be a, a bit past it. So please hmm. hold off on getting that M2 drive until you hear from us. Okay, back to our principles. Balancing evolution and revolution is the second of them. This was definitely a recurring theme. I'm really disappointed about this hard drive situation. We need new GPU features and capabilities. If, if we only have more performance, it's not really a new generation of console. Of course, many of these capabilities... Yes, next thing, we know that. It's a deep dive, yeah. That's 
part of why a PlayStation 5 teraflop is more powerful than a PlayStation 4 teraflop. But we aren't just looking for the performance. We also need the ability to do something with the GPU <laughs> that could not have been done. <laughs> Someone I'll trick back with you. And we need higher performance per watt. Every time we double the performance of some GPU, <laughs> you see flashing don't starts. want to find out we've doubled the power consumed and the heat produced. But at the same time, we have to make yeah, sure... Yeah, it's not good, is it, enabled now? I'm not happy about that. Not and happy we have about to that. ensure that the architecture is easy. That's for the purely a way to, to make off. extra money. Now, backwards compatibility was handled masterfully by AMD. They treated it as a key need. <laughs> this SSD, yeah. Process. As our solution to adding new features without blindsiding exactly that pivots. We exactly made sure that. that if there were new signals, PlayStation features, Four, it would be optional to use. Fine on your plug-in. Exactly the, the same as the Xbox X. Exactly the same. You don't have to use ray tracing to make your game. The GPU supports primitive shaders, but you can release your first game on PlayStation Five without making any use of them. Before I get into the capabilities of the GPU, I'd like to make clear two points that can be quite confusing. <laughs> what just two points? First. We have a custom AMD GPU based on their RDNA 2 technology. What does that mean? AMD is continuously yeah, Chief, that is something. revising yeah, it's something. Yeah. For RDNA 2, their goals were, roughly speaking, to reduce power of consumption by re-architecting the GPU to put data close to where it's needed, to optimize the GPU for performance... I definitely need a, a lay-down after features. this. But that feature set is malleable, which is to say that we have our, our own needs for PlayStation, and that can factor into what the AMD roadmap becomes. So collaboration is born. Yeah, if I've got your whole yeah, concepts. I, I understand AMD it, but felt to be widely useful, then they can be adopted into RDNA 2 and used broadly, including in PC GPUs. You're <laughs> gonna need a bar for it. Ideas are sufficiently specific to what we're trying to accomplish, like the GPU cache scrub. No, I, I like his voice, about, Nick. Yeah, I like it. And they end up being just for us. If you see a similar discrete GPU I like his little smile. as a PC card at roughly the same time as we release our console, that means our collaboration with AMD su succeeded uh, in producing technology useful in both worlds. It doesn't mean that we as Sony simply incorporated the PC part into our console. What did this he just say? This improvement in AMD technology what did he just it say? dangerous to rely on teraflops as an absolute indicator of performance. And CU count should be... Right, when they start teraflops. using language like that, it means that they have 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 haven't got 12 to a teraflops like the Xbox X. Each have eight That's what that CPUs, tells me. But we never think that meant the capabilities and performance are equal. It's the same for CUs. For one thing, they've been getting much larger over time. Adding new features means adding lots of transistors. This is why he said a PlayStation fact, uh, the teraflop isn't the same as the 5 PlayStation 5 teraflop. It's 62% larger mm. than the transistor count for a PlayStation 4 CU. Xbox Second, X has got 12, apparently. The PlayStation 5 GPU is backwards compatible with PlayStation 4. What does that mean? Hey, okay. One way you can achieve backwards compatibility is to put the previous console's chipset in the new console. Like right, this is getting interesting. Hold up, but hold that's, up. of course, extremely expensive. A better way is to incorporate any differences in the previous console's logic into the new console's custom chips. Meaning that even as the technology evolves, the logic and feature set that PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro titles rely on is still available in backwards compatibility. <laughs> That's the design of the PlayStation the 5, yeah. The strategy is that once backwards compatibility is in the console, it's in. It's not <laughs> as if a cost down will remove backwards I'm glad compatibility I've this. like it did on PlayStation 3. Achieving this unification of functionality took years of efforts by... This is what they're going to get us to watch when we're on lockdown Roadmap over and over again. ...potential divergence in logic. Running PS4 and PS4 titles at boosted frequencies has also added complexity. The boost is truly massive this time around, and some game code just can't handle it. Testing has to be done on a title-by-title -title basis. Results are excellent, though. We Ooh. recently <laughs> took a look at the top 100 PlayStation 4 titles as ranked by Playtime, and we're expecting almost all of them to be playable at launch on PlayStation 5. With regards to new features, as I said, our strategy was It's not clear enough. Design, so are they doing the backwards compatibility or what? Higher oh, use of the new GPU capabilities. <laughs> this will be an unskippable video. Imposed a restriction on game engines. <laughs> Software handles vertex processing, but for the most part, dedicated Your comments are hilarious, by the way. The I love it. And other geometry that the vertices form. Yeah, with four, that but what about the rest? It's not possible to do even basic optimizations, such as aborting processing of a vertex if all geometry that uses it is off screen. 
PlayStation mm. 5 has a, a new unit called the Geometry Engine, which brings handling it's a It's like the Emotion of Engine of the PlayStation 3, wasn't it? programmatic control. As a game developer, you're free to ignore its existence and use the PlayStation 5 GPU as if it were no more capable than the PS4 GPU, or you can use this new intelligence in various ways. Simple usage could be performance optimization, such as removing back-faced or off-screen vertices and triangles. <laughs> more complex usage involves something called primitive shaders, which allow the game to wow. synthesize geometry on the fly as it's being rendered. It's a brand new capability. <laughs> Using primitive shaders on this is heavy 5 shit. will allow for a, a broad variety. Who of thought techniques. this was a good idea at this stage in the detail? In the reveal, procedural details wow. close up objects and improvements to particle effects and other me, visual me too, me too, Deloitte. PlayStation 4, Another I like that. Another major new feature of our custom RDNA 2 based GPU is ray tracing using the same strategy as AMD's. Right, ray AMD tracing is lovely. Features. If you haven't seen ray the tracing, it's beautiful. A new specialized unit called the intersection engine, which Ooh. can calculate the intersection of rays with boxes and triangles. To use the intersection engine, first you build what is called an acceleration structure. It's data in RAM that contains all of your geometry. There's a specific set of formats you can use. Is it made from wild variations bone? on the same BVH concept. <laughs> then, in your shader program, you use a new instruction that asks the intersection engine to check array against the BVH. <laughs> While the intersection engine is processing the requested ray Yeah, he's even making tr ray tracing sound boring. The shaders yeah. are free to do other work. Having said that, the ray tracing instruction is pretty memory intensive, so it's a good mix with logic heavy code. No, Matt, you're on the right one. There's, of course, no need to use. Yeah, who is the presentation PS4 named at? I, I don't know. I don't know. But it presents an opportunity. Right, I spoke about this a little while ago. Using audio thinking it'll to do the ray tracing, that's very interesting. To have a big impact on audio. That should be enough for audio occlusion and some reverb. As they activation. reflect shadows around, with they can also do that with sound as well. In ray tracing, it should be possible to do some very nice global illumination. Having said that, adding ray traced shadows and reflections to a traditional... He stole that map from Elite. ...could easily take hundreds of millions of rays a second, and full ray tracing could take billions. How far can we go? I'm starting to get quite bullish. I've already seen a place... He's starting to get bullish. ...successfully using ray tracing-based reflections in complex animated scenes with Fuck only modest hell. costs. Another set of issues for the GPU involved size and frequency. How big do we make the GPU, and what frequency do we run it at? This is a balance. Yeah, we've got to go back to SSD soon, haven't we? Whatever we use to supply that chip with power and to cool it. In general, I like running the GPU at higher frequency. Let me show you why. Go on then. Here's two possible configurations for a GPU roughly of the level of the PlayStation 4 Pro. This is a thought experiment. Don't take these configurations too seriously. Yeah, Sam is very interesting. Just as the light reflects around, they can do that with sound as well. Really good. But actually, the performance is noticeably different because teraflops is defined as the computational capability of the vector ALU. That's just one part of the GPU. There are a lot of other units. And those other units <laughs> Let me show you are faster why. when the GPU frequency is higher. At 33% higher frequency, rasterization goes 33% this is, faster. This is unbelievable, isn't it? Processing the buffer Fucking goes hell. that much faster. The L2... <laughs> yeah, slowly as they <laughs> start falling over. Bandwidth and so on. This About is... About the only wow. downside... This is heavy shit. ...memory is 33% further away in terms of cycles. But the large number of benefits more than... Yeah, he said benefits. nothing. Yeah, yeah, As yeah. a friend of mine says, a rising tide lifts all boats. <laughs> also, it's easier to what? fully use 36 CUs in parallel than it is to fully use 48 CUs. When triangles are small, it's much harder to fill all those CUs with useful work. So there's a lot wow. to be said for faster, assuming you can handle the resulting It's got to be, CW, it's got to be. Which, frankly, we haven't always done the best job at. Part of the reason for that is, historically, our process for setting CPU and GPU frequencies has relied Someone's on like, oh, I actually want to turn it off, but how much we're in electrical now. power games will consume and how much heat will be produced. And then dropping this on us, the yeah. Power consumption varies a lot from. I think basically to it's when got I less teraflops than Pro, the Xbox X. I know the power consumption is high just by the fan noise. But power isn't. Well, Reds is already. Well, they power. haven't already said. It's on the Xbox, the 4K 60 is their target. It's counterintuitive, but processing dense geometry typically consumes less power than processing simple geometry, which is 
I suspect why Horizon's map screen... This really is like a, a tech insider an presentation, isn't it? So I can't believe they've released this to general public today. It's crazy. ...to try to guess what the maximum power consumption during the entire console lifetime might be, which is to say, the worst-case scene in the worst-case game, and prepare a cooling solution that we think will be quiet at that power level. If we get it right, fan noise is minimal. If we get it wrong, the console will be quite loud for the higher power games, and there's even a chance that it might overheat and shut down if we misestimate power too badly. PlayStation 5 is especially challenging because the CPU supports 256 bits that yeah. consume a lot of power. These are great here and there, but presumably only minimally used. It's terrible, or isn't it? Yeah. Are they? If we plan for Don't get me wrong, I like this sort of stuff. But the usage, timing for this is so off. Clock so off. Lower, or noticeably increase the size of the power supply and fan. So, after much discussion, yeah, we decided to go with a fair very point, different Chief. direction on PlayStation. I think this is more of a backup video. We built a GPU he said at the start, this was meant to be a conference. Mind it's cancelled, so we're going to play you this instead. So large. maybe, Each yeah. Each has 62% more transistors than the CUs we were using on PlayStation 4. That's so what it is, TED Talk, isn't it? Yeah. Transistor counts, yeah. 36 RDNA 2 CUs equates to roughly 58 PlayStation 4 CUs. It is a fairly sizable GPU. Then we went with a variable frequency strategy for PlayStation 5, which is to say we continuously run the GPU and CPU. In <laughs> Boris Johnson's doing a we better job than there. a generous amount of electrical <laughs> power and then increase the frequency of GPU and CPU until they reach the capabilities of the system's cooling solution. It's a completely different paradigm. Rather than running at constant frequency and letting power vary based on the workload, we run at essentially constant power and let the frequency ba vary based on the workload. We then tackle the engineering challenge of a cost-effective and high I put tech deep dive into the into the uh, for that title specific power level. In some ways, it becomes a simpler problem because there are no more unknowns. There's no need to guess what power consumption the worst-case game might have. As for the details of the cooling solution, we're saving them for our teardown. I think you'll be quite happy with what the engineering team came up with. So, how fast can we run the GPU and CPU with this strategy? <laughs> Death by PowerPoint. The simplest approach would be to it's look fine. at the it's fine. temperature like of the I say, and die and throttle the frequency. I don't think this was their planned video. But that video. won't work. It fails to the create conference a got cancelled, PlayStation so. 5 experience. It wouldn't do to run a console slower simply because it was in a hot room. So rather than look at the actual temperature of the silicon die, we look at the activities that the GPU and CPU are performing and set the frequencies on that basis. Which makes I don't think this video should even be... This should be available on the website well, if you wanted to watch it. I think AMD's putting it out smart shift is a big mistake, actually. A big mistake. power from the CPU to the GPU so it can squeeze out a few more pixels. Yeah, yeah, me too, Benefits Shifter, Jim. Yeah. this strategy are quite large. Running a GPU at 2 gigahertz was looking like an unreachable Scarab. target with the old fixed frequency <laughs> Thank strategy. You. With this new paradigm, we're, we're able to run way over that. In fact, we have yeah, this to is, cap the, the video's great. Frequency There's nothing wrong with the video, but you, sh you should go so searching for this video. It shouldn't be properly. days after a quite exciting Xbox teardown with all the graphics and the way it's all put in. Where's and that? expect the GPU to spend most of its time at or close to... <laughs> yeah, probably CW, yeah. Points. Similarly, running the CPU at 3 gigahertz was causing headaches with the old strategy. <laughs> But now we can run it as high as three. <laughs> Best comment so far. Fact, this is the process God's went through building his PC. At that, frequency. that doesn't mean all games will be running at 2.23 gigahertz and 3.5 gigahertz. When yeah, 10.3 teraflops. Arrive, so it's it will less powerful than the Xbox X. Speed, but not yeah. too much lower. To reduce power by 10 percent, it's it less powerful. A couple of percent reduction in frequency. So I'd expect any. And why did everyone say the Xbox One? All things considered, the change not to failed. Was, was that far behind? Because it wasn't as powerful for PlayStation as the uh, PlayStation. The 4. final of our three principles was about finding new dreams. It's important for us on the hardware team to find new ways to expand or deepen gaming, and that's. So what that's not good news, is it? On 3D audio. As players, we experience the game through the visuals, through audio, <laughs> and through the feedback we receive. It's because we're control, waiting for something, so aren't we, at the what end? Happens. We're waiting for it. Personally, I feel a game is just dead without audio. Visuals are, of course, important, but the impact of audio is huge as well. 
At the same time, the audio team on a game project has to do a lot with a little. For example, on PlayStation 4, there's fierce competition for the Jaguar CPU cores. Audio typically ends up getting just a fraction of a core. That's not much of a computational resource, particularly when I wouldn't base it on this video, though, Skiddy, you know? 60 frames a second. <laughs> if I didn't know dreams. processing needs to happen at almost 200 times a second. So, it's been tough going making forward progress on audio with PlayStation 4. Yeah, it's been tough going, this video. PlayStation 3 was such a beast when it came <laughs> Am I missing the SSD bit? The SPUs in Cell were almost a perfect device for audio rendering. Simple, pipelined algorithms could really take advantage of asynchronous DMA and frequently reached 100% utilization of the floating point unit. There's unfortunately nothing comparable on PlayStation 4. Probably the most dramatic progress hey, here we go. Here we go. has been with virtual reality. The PSVR hardware has its own audio unit. It supports about 50 pretty decent 3D sound sources. And this provided a hint as to where we could go with audio, as well as some valuable experience. Not to oversimplify, but here were our goals for audio. Please don't audio. oversimplify. That's not why we're the here. The first goal was great 10 point audio free, Javine. 10 not point just free. VR users or soundbar owners or headphone users. That meant audio had to be part of the console. It couldn't be a peripheral. The second goal was to support hundreds of sound sources. We didn't want developers to have to pick and choose. Yeah, what not to oversimplify, because that would be terrible, sounds. wouldn't it? We wanted every sound in the game to have dimensionality. <laughs> And finally, we wanted to really take on the challenges of presence and locality. I can't wait to now, see what the comments presence, in, not necessarily my video, but in the actual there. Sony You've video are. I'm going to read them. It's not, of course, something we thought we could perfectly achieve. But the idea was that if we stopped using just a rain sound and instead used lots of 3D audio sources for I'm rain interested in this, though, that improving the audio. Around you, then at some point PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, the audio is pretty much feeling, the same, isn't it? This feeling of real presence inside the virtual world of the game. This has the capacity to affect your appreciation of the game, uh, just like music in a game does. The yeah, definitely of Simpson. The locality yeah. is simpler. It's just your sense of where the audio is coming from. To the right of you, no, I didn't say you, that, Kingy. You. This can immerse you further in the game, and it can also directly enhance the game. Oh, they're saying it's Corona. Oh, that's why I wanted to stream this, so we can just have a proper chat and, old school. you know, a You're slower fighting enemies in conversation. dark, spooky locations. Hello, Harold. How are you? Back in the day, if you played the game using the TV speakers, you could tell that there was one last enemy growling and hunting you down, but it was difficult to tell quite where that enemy was. With headphones, you could tell that the enemy was somewhere on the right, which lets you deduce, if you couldn't see it, that it must be somewhere behind and to your right. But with 3D audio with good locality, the <laughs> Steve, they won't. you know the enemy is precisely <laughs> there, and you turn and you take it out. So, how do we know where a sound is coming from in the first place? Well, all those bumps and folds in the ear have a meaning, evolutionary. Oh, fucking speaking. hell. Based no. on what direction the sound is coming from. He's going there. He's going there. Inside the ear. There's some constructive and destructive interference, and the result is a change in volume. The phase of the sound also shifts, depending <laughs> on what path the sound Kill me, please. reach the ear canal. Oh, These fuck it. I can't believe he's doing this. shifts are different for each direction and also no, vary that, this is depending bad. on the frequency of the sound. Head size and head shape also impact the sound in a similar fashion. Wow. The way that the sound changes based on direction. I'm, I'm starting to get shocked now that they're going in the down this road. Head related Fuck transfer hell. function, or HRTF. Here's part of one. Wow. The vertical axis is the frequency. The horizontal axis is the direction, front, back, left, right, and the I know. color gives. The <laughs> Philip, I noticed that. He hasn't got a dry mouth. Frequency. What the fuck? The HRTF is as unique to an individual as a fingerprint is. In fact, you're looking at mine right now. Here's how we measure an HRTF. We've taken hundreds of people through this process. We put a microphone in the subject's left and right ear canals. And then <laughs> he will tell us where P comes from. Of an array of 22 speakers. <laughs> We then play an audio sweep from each speaker as we rotate the subject. In the course of 10 or 20 minutes, we're able to sample the HRTF at over 1,000 locations. Using an HRTF when rendering yeah, audio... Yeah, the marketing team needs firing quality, if this is what's going to happen. it's computationally expensive. The simplest way to use an HRTF... <laughs> you need a chin stand like that. Stop you nodding off. ...it's coming from one of those 1,000 locations we sample. 
Unfortunately, the processing has to be done in frequency Fuck domain hell. rather than time domain. So there's multiple fast Fourier transforms needed for every sound source. It's unbelievable. I'm actually shocked by That's this. I'm not joking. I'm shocked. Multiplies. This computational complexity was the determining factor for our strategy. It meant we had to bite the bullet and design and build a custom hardware unit. <laughs> Homeschooling, yeah. Audio. Collectively, we're referring to the hardware unit and the proprietary algorithms we run on it as Tempest 3D Audio Tech. The meaning of 3D audio and technology I am, should be I am interested in the upgrade of audio Tempest, from PlayStation 4 really to 5. I am. Our goals with audio. It suggests a certain you did intensity Stimson. of you experience did. and also hints at your presence within. <laughs> we're calling the hardware <coughs> unit that we built the Tempest engine. It's based on AMD's GPU technology. We modified a compute unit in such a way as to make it very close to the SPUs in PlayStation 3. <laughs> the audience has a raised, I know. Ideal for audio. So the Tempest engine has no caches, just like an SPU. All data access is via... <laughs> Will it have LEDs? Just like an SPU. And can you change the color of those more LEDs? Power than a CPU, thanks to <laughs> the and he's going to explain how we see things. And then it would be more efficient than our GPU, thanks to Keep your SPU comments like coming, because I love them. I love them. It's the making it bearable. to make possible near 100% utilization of the CU's <laughs> vector units. Where we ended up is a unit with roughly the same SIMD power and bandwidth as all eight Jaguar cores. Yeah, this is the why the price is 6,000 pounds. If we were to pounds. use the same algorithms as PSVR, that's enough for something like 5,000 sound sources. But of course, we want to use more complex algorithms, and we don't need anything like that number of sounds. It would have been wonderful if I was a simple really strategy, excited about this. Using Dolby really pumped up to could have share this with goals, you. But we wanted 3D audio I feel bad all, now for making you sit through this. License sound bars or the like. Also, we wanted many hundreds of sound sources, not just the 32 that Atmos supports. And finally, we wanted to be able to throw an overwhelming amount of processing power at the problem. And it wasn't clear what any peripheral might have inside of it. In fact, with the Tempest engine, we've even got enough power that we can allocate some to the games, to the extent that games want to make use of convolution reverb and other algorithms that are either computationally expensive or need Fuck high bandwidth. Now. But the <laughs> this is making me hate Tempest video games. Remains 3D audio. <laughs> now, 3D audio is a major academic research topic. It's safe to say that no one in the world has all of the answers. <laughs> And the set of algorithms that has to be invented, tuned, or implemented to realize... Uh, hugs, here, they haven't said anything yet. Immense. Yeah. For example, use of HRTFs in games is quite complex. Before, I talked about making a sound source appear as if it's coming Lee, uh, from one we of did those you a favor then if HRTF we missed it. sample locations. <laughs> but for high-quality 3D game audio, we have to handle other possibilities. The sound source might not be at one of the thousand HRTF locations. That's the point, though. Um, so we have to what's blend you won't get a PC with the amount of ray tracing and graphical power the that sound you will in a console, not to start with. Very special handling as that blend keeps changing, and that can cause phase artifacts in the resulting audio. Or the sound source might have a size to it, meaning it should feel as if it's coming from an area rather than... <laughs> as an electronic form. engineer, I find this presentation also pornographic. There's categories of approaches to be handled. 3D audio can be... Is that Fred Dinbo you got in your... Uh, processing of 3D sound sources. Your but profile. But alternatively, ambisonics can be used for 3D ambisonics, audio. Ambisonics, here we go. Ambisonics speak somewhat like the spherical harmonics used in computer graphics. And finally, there's audio devices. The player might be using headphones or TV speakers or have a higher-end surround sound set up with six or more speakers, love him. What all man. of which need different approaches. Love him. Love That's him the bits. a lot of variations. It's nice to have the computational resources of the Tempest engine, but it's clear that achieving our ultimate goals with 3D audio is going to be a multi-year... He hasn't got a dry mouth. I mean, process. what's going on, you know? Having said that, headphone audio implementation is largely complete at this time. Uh, it was a natural place for us to start. With headphones, we control exactly what each ear hears, and therefore the algorithmic development and implementation are more straightforward. Yeah. For Definitely TV speakers stylo, yeah. and stereo speakers were in the process of implementing virtual. No, thank you in the chat for making it entertaining. That if you're sitting you got dry mouth from listening. TV, then the sound can be made to feel as if it's coming from any direction. That's genuine, behind. though, isn't it, Johnny? He's been on for 50 virtual minutes. Virtual surround sound has a lot in common with 3D what audio. What has he actually said? But what it's has more he said? complex because the left ear can hear the right speaker and vice versa. <laughs> We have a basic implementation of virtual surround sound up and running. We're now looking at increasing the size of that sweet spot 
which is to say, I don't know if they're the area you need to be in. I mean, we always knew it was a tech larger. deep dive. And we're also working to, but to surely do tech deep dive. You've got to see Headphone the product, haven't you? The Maybe not. Is it just a PowerPoint presentation the whole way? But we're going to see what if it is, I'm disappointed. Virtual surround sound to a similar level, <laughs> after which we'll start in on setups with more speakers, such as six channel surround sound. You know, to do a deep, deep it's dive. It's the point where some of I the PlayStation see 5 games in development are extensively using these systems. One of the game demos allows you to toggle between conventional PlayStation 4 style stereo audio and our new 3D audio. Finn, you don't have to keep spamming the same thing. Over the no headphones point. And I see wow. it. I could feel a difference. 3D audio has that dimensional feel to it. Conventional stereo audio feels smashed flat by comparison. No, I don't think they are, no. Is obvious. So, a big advancement, but have I entered the matrix? Does my brain <laughs> believe I'm really there? I don't like think I we've all entered the matrix. I explained I a target of presence. Well, the answer is no, but you've probably <laughs> caught on to what's missing here, namely whose HRTF was being used. It wasn't mine. It was the default HRTF. The audio team analyzed the hundreds that they measured and chose the one they felt was the closest fit to the... Survive <laughs> the matrix. Used. This shows a, a piece of the default HRTF on the left <laughs> and my HRTF on the right. You can see that the general features are much the same. <laughs> He's that kid that cries because he got 99 out of 100. With the default HRTF, as I said, the 3D audio sounds pretty great. Love it. When I use my HRTF, though, the audio reaches a, a higher level. <laughs> is it, of yeah, is it a boy? I don't know. That when using headphones and my HRTF, I occasionally get fooled and even think a sound. I'm so fascinated at how bad world, this is. I genuinely, I'm, game. I'm almost gripped to it because how bad the it is. Corollary to this is that there are a few people <laughs> whose HRTFs are sufficiently far from the default HRTF. That's the red dot here. That they can toggle between PS4 style and PS5 style. Audio can detect and if not you're pregnant. Much difference. I've had a few people describe the PlayStation 5's 3D audio as sounding like a bit better stereo audio. Presumably, they're the ones at the very edges of this dial. I don't literally know what Which we're looking at. What HRTF you're using is key. I'd like everyone to be able to experience what I'm experiencing, but I think we it's are not possible to measure the HRTF of every Fucking PlayStation hell. user. That means HRTF selection and synthesis are going to be big topics <laughs> going forward as the Tempest technology. I'm matures. gripped to it. I'm gripped. At PlayStation 5 Honestly, Launch, we'll be offreing a for choice all the of wrong reasons. HRTFs. There's a, a simple <laughs> test where you pick the one that gives you the best locality. That's just the first step, though. This is an open-ended research topic. Maybe you'll be sending us a photo of your ear hey. and we'll choose a neural <laughs> network to pick the closest HRTF in our library. So we've got you'll be sending us a video of your ears and your head. What and we'll make a fuck? 3D model of them and synthesize the HRTF. Who'd you Maybe send the video to? What are you talking about? The HRTF. We'll be subtly changing it as you play and what home in fuck? on the HRTF that gives you the highest score. Who do you send a picture of your ear to? Ear at Sony.com. We'll all be taken together over the next few years. Ultimately, we're committing to enabling everyone to experience wow. that next level of He's going to make you go through depression, yeah. Hopefully, I've been able to illustrate a bit about our design and decision-making process today. And no. why PlayStation 5 has the feature set that it does. Now comes the fun part. We get to see how the development community takes advantage of that feature Come set. on. I'm hoping for the completely unexpected. Will it come from audio, ray tracing, the capabilities of the SSD, or something Come else? Come on. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Thank you for your time. Today. Oh, what? Well, that's it? Oh, my God. Fucking hell. Um, uh... Wow. That's unbelievable, isn't it? That really is... <laughs> Okay, now I'm I'm almost I, I don't know what to say actually I don't know what to say it was fucking terrible yeah thumb it down yeah please do oh fucking hell okay I understand that apparently there was going to be a conference and this is instead you're better off just cancelling the conference this is fucking hell which was no the public yeah I, yeah but that they still decided to go live with this so we still got to judge it in that manner haven't we. <laughs> well done, Sony. You nailed it. Fucking hell. Right, what did I take out of that? 
that both manufacturers, Sony and Xbox, are going to sell us proprietary hard drives so we can play the latest games. What they're both saying is, in case you didn't get that, or in case you don't care, if you've got a plug-in hard drive external at the moment in your PlayStation 4, you can play games off it. That's totally fine. On the Xbox X and the PlayStation 4, you can still play PlayStation 4 games, older generation games on the Xbox. You can play them off of your own hard drive. If you want to play the latest games, PlayStation 5, Xbox X, you're going to need a proprietary hard drive. Sony um, are saying that you can buy from wherever as long as it meets their minimum spec and they've got an actual drive bay presumably in the back from what they're showing on the xbox site it is like a little thumbstick they come in one terabyte um uh storage uh, meters and you plug it in like a usb drive that's where your xbox x games can only be played for you can still say you're short of hard drive space you can still drag your game off of there put it onto your normal hard drive drag it over until you buy more and more and more proprietary hard drives that i'm really really disappointed with I understand the reasons they're saying that yeah there's a lot of um space on the hard drive that's wasted we want to use that as virtual ram okay that's fine but does it mean we have to buy a proprietary hard drive each and every time uh, and they're not going to be cheap are they the other thing that i got out of that is that they're pretty much using the same um the same uh processor cores same gddr6 but it hasn't got as much power. It, teraflop is how you measure the overall computational power. The Xbox X has got 12. The PlayStation 5 has got 10.2, was it? Uh, no, you're boring this year. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to wrap it up. So it's not as powerful. That's what I'm getting. It's not as powerful. Yeah, 10.3 as opposed to 12. So I don't know how, how different that is. But I, they just went on too much about SSDs to try and sell us their proprietary system. And he kept saying a, a teraflop isn't a teraflop, basically. It's not apples and pears. So what he's basically saying is because we've got 10.3, Xbox say they've got 12. Don't listen to them. That's what they're saying. Oh, but it has HRTFs, whatever the fuck. I'm, wow, I'm really, really shocked at that. I really, really am. It was terrible, wasn't it? I can't believe there's four of you, 400 of you sitting there. It was terrible. Terrible flop, yeah. And yes, this video wasn't made for the public, probably, and the conference was cancelled, so they put this on instead. But someone made the choice. Someone watched through this video and thought, yeah, I reckon they'll like that. And that is bullshit. <laughs> that made me want to hurt my PlayStation 4. Right, I will take advantage while I've got 400 of you in here. It is um, it is a fun gaming channel with a lovely community. If you feel like subscribing, lovely. Go ahead and do that. And I am going to be doing a 24-hour live stream this Friday night using American Truck, Euro Truck. I'm doing it for charity for Help the Hero. So if you want to get involved in that, feel free to press the subscribe button. You never know, you might like it. Right, that is it, everyone. Try and have a lovely evening try not to think too much about this bloody video terrible i'm so sorry to bring you this content have a lovely evening see you next time